Namaste everybody in the United States, in India, and all over the world. And welcome to this webinar hosted by the American Academy of Yoga and Meditation. My name is Akash and I will be your host today. AAYM is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting and spreading the philosophies of yoga and meditation derived from the ancient yogic texts. Through this month-long webinar series, we hope to inform as many people as possible about the unsurpassed benefits that yoga has across the board of different aspects of medicine. Today, we will hear from a very accomplished speaker about the wonderful benefits of yoga as they apply to cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases are the number one cause of death in the world with approximately 18 million people dying each year because of them. A major cause of cardiovascular diseases is a bad lifestyle. Many people eat unhealthy food, don't do any exercise, smoke cigarettes, and have a lot of stress in their daily lives. And because of this, they get illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, and even obesity. Yoga and meditation have been proven to help alleviate these risk factors significantly. So today, our speaker will show us some great yoga asanas that can be helpful to patients with cardiovascular diseases. Not only that, but today, we will also have the opportunity to practice the yoga techniques that we learn in this session only. But don't get too excited. Let me first introduce to you all who we will be listening to. Today, we will get to hear from Dr. Dilip Sarkar. Dr. Sarkar is a retired vascular surgeon who taught as associate professor of surgery at Eastern Virginia Medical School in Virginia. He used to be the president of the board of directors for the American Heart Association. He is also the past president of the board of directors for the International Association of Yoga Therapists. He is also a past chairman of the board of the Life in Yoga Institute. He is also a fellow of the American Association of Integrative Medicine. He is also a fellow of American College of Surgeons. Dr. Sarkar is a certified yoga therapist and a certified Ayurvedic yoga therapist. And he is also a certified yoga teacher. Currently, Dr. Sarkar is the chairman of the Center for Integrative Medicine and Yoga in Virginia. He also teaches yoga therapy, Ayurvedic philosophy, and Ayurvedic yoga therapy, both nationally and internationally to healthcare providers. Dr. Sarkar focuses on integrating yogic and Ayurvedic wisdom with the science of Western medicine. In 2019, Dr. Sarkar was awarded the honorary Doctor of Letters degree in yoga by S. Vyasa University. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. Sarkar. We welcome you to our studio. With that, I hope you all enjoyed this session. And I will now hand it over to Dr. Sarkar to take over this session. Thank you so much for coming once again. Namaste. My dear <clears throat> sisters and brothers of American Academy of Yoga and Meditation. It's an honor and privilege for me to present Yoga Therapy for Cardiovascular Diseases for the esteemed audience of AYM and also the All India Institute of Medical Science in Rishikesh, India. Topic today, as Akash just said, that is a Yoga Therapy for Cardiovascular Disorders or Diseases and we, as an integrative physician, we're a Western trained physician. I'm a certified yoga therapist. I'm a certified Ayurvedic yoga therapist. What do you understand about yoga as a therapy? As all you know, yoga, we call it actually, the root word is a yoga. And I use it. Yoga is anglicized version. When I'm in the West, I use a yoga. I'm talking to the Indian crowd from India. I use the word yoga. 
I'm from Bengal. When I do the Bengali crowd, I use the word called jog. Yoga therapy, I call it jog chikitsa. This is a philosophy. Yoga Sutra Pitanjali, 196 sutras, of which 193 are to quiet down your mind. And you will see the mind is the root cause of all the cardiovascular disorders. And I'm going to show it to you in a step by step. What is the root cause of cardiovascular disorders and how this yoga can help you. The practice, all you know, this uh, eight limb practice. Yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratahart, dharan, dhan, samadhi is the eight limb practice to achieve union of your body, mind, and spirit. Yoga therapy basically means adaptation of these practices based on the patient's clinical condition. Use the same two. There is nothing called yoga and meditation. Meditation is a seventh limb of yoga. Person with the cardiovascular disorders, they're not able to sit down in the ground to sit down in a Sukhasan, Siddhasan, Padmasan, or Vajrasan. They'll be sitting in a chair. We'll be talking about the chair. Before we start our practice session, before we even discuss, I always like to do a little practice session with my talk. I have tons and thousands and thousands of slides. I do a presentation yoga therapy for cardiovascular disease. I teach it to the physicians for a whole weekend. But here for a short time, let's enjoy a little session. The first, what is a cardiovascular disease? The root cause of cardiovascular disease today, we call it a stress. The stress is the activation of a part of the brain. The part of the brain is called your emotional brain, the limbic system. It has two nuclei, amygdalia and a hippocampus. Amygdalia responds to fear, hippocampus responds to memory. Once the limbic system is activated, it sends a signal through neurotransmitters through your hypothalamus. Hypothalamus sends a signal to the autonomic nervous system and also to the pituitary gland and through pituitary adrenal axis, the net outcome of a stress is a hyperactive sympathetic tone and also a high level of cortisol in your blood. Cortisol is the hormone of the stress. Cortisol converts your end product of metabolism, which is a glucose, to your omental fat. That is called a thrifty gene hypothesis. It means body is thinking in the future, I may not have any food. So it's converting into omental fat and this omental fat is inside our abdomen which is called a truncal obesity. So truncal obesity, when you see a person having a truncal obesity is the beginning of the cardiovascular disorder. Omental fat acts as an endocrine organ. It secretes pro-inflammatory molecule. It secretes adiponectin, creates inflammatory process, which starts a cascade of phenomena diabetes, hypertension, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disorders, and dyslipidemia. So what happens today, what used to call a cardiovascular disease, if you call the blockage of the coronary arteries, which is causing your myocardial infarction, and we used to call it a risk factors. Diabetes is a risk factor. Hypertension is a risk factors. High cholesterol is a risk factors high triglyceride, low HDL is a risk factor. Today, none of them are risk factors. 
They're all in the same syndrome called your metabolic syndrome. Today you have a diabetes, tomorrow you'll have a hypertension. Today you have a hypertension, tomorrow you'll have a dyslipidemia. Today you have a dyslipidemia, you'll have a coronary artery disease. And whole happens from your tightness of the coronary arteries. But the root cause, underlying cause of this activation of sympathetic tone, we see today, is your insomnia and sleep apnea. All of us know a sleep apnea is going to cause your diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. And how does it do? When you have sleep apnea, you get a fear. You get a fear of unknown. That fear activates the limbic system. And we call it a psychoneuroendocrinology. So the root cause will be correcting your insomnia and a sleep apnea. And the primary therapy, yoga therapy, is a called relaxation response and activation of parasympathetic tone. So what happens when you create the environment of relaxation response, this stays with you. It's a phenomenon called neuroplasticity. Slowly and slowly the relaxation response, which starts from your muscles, bones and joints, enters into your systemic system and it creates what is called a vasodilatation. Blood vessel, the smooth muscle starts to relax and it creates called endothelial health. So the whole therapy for cardiovascular disorder is the maintenance of cardiovascular health. Maintenance of endothelial health. What is an endothelial health? Endothelial health today, primarily we know, is the activation of nitric oxide. When you have a nitric oxide in your body, nitric oxide is a potent vasodilator, opens up the blood vessel, and nitric oxide is a mediator of your parasympathetic tone. There is some other substances which activates your parasympathetic tone. It's called cyclic GMP, acetylcholine, nitric oxide. In contrast, sympathetic tone is activated by epinephrine, not epinephrine. So how simple practice, a practice of pranayama, a breathing through your nostril. You always breathe through your nose. God gave you a nose to breathe. God gave you a mouth to talk and eat. You don't do, you breathe through your mouth. When you're breathing through your nostril, first lung is like a balloon. It has a six liter capacity. It needs 1.5 liter to keep the lungs open. But we have 4.5 liter called a vital capacity, which you can exchange. Guess what? Normally in each breathing cycle, which of tidal volume is only 500 cc, 0.5 liter. You have 80 to 90% reserve in your lung. So learn how to breathe out first. A yogic practice will be first learn how to breathe out. Slowly take a deep breath in. Without any effort. Remember, if you make an effort in your yoga therapy practice, you are going to be counter counteracting the relaxation response and parasympathetic tone. If you're doing an asana poses, if you get any pain, you create an imbalance in your physical body, you back off. Yoga therapy practice is individual. It is not competitive. You listen to your body signal, body signal is a pain. Anumaya kosha to pranumaya kosha. Any imbalance you create in the physical body, it will show up in your breath. All the practice will do with a completely effortless ease and to the point that you are able to, you're able to talk. 
you were able to sing when you are doing. So what does nitric oxide has to do with yoga practice? When you breathe through your nostril, nose is like a filter. It filters the air. Nose is like a personal air conditioner. If outside air is warm, it'll cool it down. If outside air is cool, it'll warm it up. Then the air goes to the side of the nose, it's called a turbinate. Turbinate has some groove and it creates a vortex. This vortex, when passes over the mucosa of your sinuses, which is inside your nostril, it releases nitric oxide. A nasal breathing releases nitric oxide. That air is then going to go behind your throat. Lung has the three lobes. Upper lobe, middle lobe, lower lobe. It's going to the upper lobe, middle lobe, lower lobe, all the way down to the almost level of your diaphragm. So when you practice the pranayama, we all practice through our nostril. Somebody says, I know, I have to breathe through your mouth. Yes, if you have to breathe through your mouth, the physiology will be, you can breathe in through your nostril, you can breathe out through your mouth. That is physiological. If you breathe through your mouth, you have no idea where the air has gone in. Now, to have a, a better your pranayama practice, the pranayama practice has to be a completely relaxed and effortless. That means during whole pranayama, doesn't matter how slow you do, how fast you do, you will be able to talk, you will be able to sing, and you will be able to be completely effortless. Pranayama will activate your parasympathetic tone. Pranayama will increase your negative intrathoracic pressure. When intrathoracic pressure gets negative, you get a more blood flow coming through inferior vena cava. There's a lot of physiology behind it, but simply saying that a pranayama practice increases a preload, a preload of your heart. Simple relaxation response reduces your peripheral resistance. Your afterload goes down. A practice of relaxation response in your body and a practice of pranayama going to cause increase your preload reduce your afterload, essentially it will increase your ejection fraction. There is no medication in this earth which you can do it. I teach a yoga for cardiovascular disorder, especially comparing the four medications cardiologists use. When we have a, either cardiac event, after a stent, after a coronary bypass, they'll give you aspirin, statin, beta blocker, S inhibitor. What are the physiological changes? A relaxation response and parasympathetic activation does that slowly and slowly we see the patient's pharmaceutical requirement starts to come down. Their ACE inhibitor level is coming down. Their beta blocker is coming down. level of statin coming down. And it's not that you go to see your doctor, the doctor is doing it, checking your blood pressure, checking your cholesterol and said, hey, whatever you are doing, you're looking great, you're doing good. Let me cut down the medication a little bit, doctors will do it. But remember the whole breathing, what the pranayama practice we're going to do to activate your parasympathetic tone has to be through a relaxed muscles. The muscles of respiration are called your skeletal muscles. These muscles can be trained. Muscles can be relaxed. Skeletal muscle, like the, your biceps muscles are skeletal muscles. You can do a, say, if you can do a five pounds, slowly it will develop called neuroplasticity. You can do 10 pounds. 
you can do 20 pounds. Today, in your breathing, you can do maybe slowly breathe out. You can do a two second in, four second out. Slowly, you'll be able to see. When you practice, you can be able to do four second in, eight second out. Exhalation longer than inhalation. Exhalation is parasympathetic. Inhalation is sympathetic. We've been doing it for so long, we can do easily 10 seconds in, 20 seconds out, but totally effortlessly. But for that, you need to do a relaxation of your respiratory muscles. And most important relaxation is called your chest expansion. When you learn how to chest expansion, when you learn how to relaxation of the upper part of the body, then you learn how to relax your neck. Remember the neck muscles, sternocleidomastoid muscle and your trapezius muscle. The two muscles are supplied by a cranial nerve. When you relax, there's a cranial nerve. You'll see slowly and slowly, we'll see the practices. The first relaxation practice, if you see, if you see your hands, if you see your back, and most of the people will sit down in a chair. Here I am sitting in a chair. This is a very special chair. This is you call a, your kneeling chair. What it is, is that a practice of your, we keep our spine straight. I do a computer, I put my kneeling chair, my spine is always straight. I relax my hands, I relax my wrist, I relax my shoulder, the back, and all of them get relaxed when you do a very simple asana. Remember, you listen to your body signal, simple asana called Pashchim Namaskar. If you're sitting in a chair, see if you can put your hands to the back slowly, and you can see it, you will see it very, very clearly how easy it is. You put your hands to the back, slowly, keep your spine straight, keep your eyes closed, do your breathing, breathing out longer than breathing in, and slowly and slowly you will see you can do a prayer pose in the back. Stay here. If you stay here a little longer, what happens? Muscles cannot stay contracted too long. Muscle starts to relax. Five to ten breath. It will go high up a little bit. More and more goes high up. You show all the way high up and you stay here. You stay here in a Pashim Namaskar. Asanas have a three stages. First one is called Aramho. It's called the beginning. But if you keep the if you stay in the asana longer time, the muscle will start to relax. Before muscle starts to relax, there will be some fasciculation. You'll say twitching. And then you'll go down because it's a sthiti, stability. Then you get a profound relaxation, which is called your visharyan. Pashim Namaskar, then you incorporate Brahma Mudra. Brahma Mudra is a four posture of your neck, back in the front, side to side, looking in the back, left, looking in the right, and slowly rotate your neck. And a beautiful technique is you do it with a Brahmri Pranayam, sound of a Brahmri Pranayam. Why? A Brahmri Pranayam, sound of a Brahma, when you see a typical Brahmri Pranayam, what you do, let me get the hand out, I'll put in a typical Brahmri Pranayam, we put our index finger in the forehead, we use three fingers to close our eyes, we use your thumb to close our ear. Shut down our five senses. Why? The five senses keeps us awake, alert, active, it is your mind. Do it through your nostril, you breathe first, you breathe out through your nostril, take a deep breath in through your nostril and breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. And the Brahmri Pranayam 
is a therapy for insomnia. People with insomnia, we tell them to do a Brahmri Pranayam. So let's do a one round of Brahmri Pranayam to see how to do it. Breathing out first. Take a deep breath in. Mm. Slowly take both the hands. Keep rubbing your hands. Keep rubbing your hands. This is called palming and cupping. And keep rubbing your hands when you feel the warmth in your hand. If you're wearing glasses, remove your glasses. Put the hands over the eyes like a cup. So relaxation of the eyes. Massage your forehead. Massage your eyes. Massage your face. Massage your ear. Back of your ear. Front of your ear. In front of your ear. This is called your auricular branch of the vagus nerve. There's a branch in the vagus nerve. So when you do a little bit of irritation inside your external air canal, you feel a profound relaxation response. Bring your head down, massage in front of your neck. This is called your carotid sinuses. When you get a carotid sinus massage, you get a parasympathetic activation, relaxation response. Take the hands to the back. Massage your back. This is your trapezius and sternomastoid muscle supplied by the cranial nerve. We let the people with cardiovascular disorder do this a simple technique. This is your Brahmri Pranayam for your insomnia. For sleep apnea, we do Ujjayi Pranayam. And you'll see, I'll show it to you a little later, Ujjayi Pranayam, how to do it and activate. But let me show you the first, a chest opening poses. It's your Paschim Namaskar. And stay in the Paschim Namaskar pose. And don't compete with anybody. Wherever your hand comes, stay here. Slowly breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Slowly drop your head to the back. And breathing out to the sound of a bumblebee. Mm. Wonderful practice. I'm having a saliva in my mouth. When you get saliva in your mouth, it's a parasympathetic activation. <coughs> when you get a when you get scared, when a sympathetic activation, your mouth becomes dry. Again, side to side. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Mm. Opposite side. Deep breath in. Mm. My eyes closed. When your eyes are closed, you don't know who is doing what, but you can literally act in your subtle body. Third one, looking at the back without turning your shoulder. Mm. Other side. Mm. Drop your head down. 
You will slowly rotate your neck, first to the left, to the back, to the right, then right to the back, to the left. Deep breath in. Mm. Now you're ready to activate the branches of the your vagus nerve. Vagus nerve is 80% is your afferent. That means vagus nerve takes the information to your brainstem, then sends a signal to activate your parasympathetic tone. So the first, as I said, there is an auricular branch of the vagus nerve it is inside the external auditory canal. So you massage, you massage your earlobe, massage the back of your front of your ear in the canal. It activates your vagal tone. Next one, the branch of the vagus comes to your pharyngeal plexus. Laryngeal plexus, the vagus nerve originates, it comes down, it comes in between your in, in a carotid sheet in between your common carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and in the right side, it gives a branch around the subclavian artery, goes high up. It's called a recurrent laryngeal nerve. It supplies your larynx, intrinsic muscles of the larynx. Other one goes all the way down to your heart. It goes around your aortic arch, comes back, as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. The vagus nerve also gives a branch to the larynx or a superior laryngeal nerve, which supplies the cricothyroid muscles. So how to activate the pharyngeal plexus? It is your, we call it a corno rogantor pranayam. Corno is the ear, rogantor means your controlling. It's opening your eustachian tube in Western medical called Valsalva maneuver. Sit in your spine straight, your eyes are closed, your hand gets relaxed with, it's called the Adhi Mudra. It is called a Balo Mushti Mudra. If you see a baby, baby will close the fist, they'll put a thumb inside and close. Always try this, put a thumb inside and close. This is called your Balo Mushti Mudra, Adhi Mudra. Put your hands down very nicely. Breathe out first, always breathe out first in yoga therapy practice. Take a deep breath in. Try to breathe out, closing your nostril and the mouth. You'll feel there's a tube called eustachian tube. It will open up, you'll feel it affects your tympanic membrane. It happens many a time when you are in the aeroplane, when you're in the aeroplane flight. Eustachian tube gets blocked, you, get a, you can swallow. It opens up. As I said, larynx is supplied by your superior and inferior laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the vagus nerve. Remember, Ujjayi Pranayam is a contraction of the larynx but it's a totally relaxed phenomenon. You try to breathe in against the resistance and it activates the parasympathetic tone. It sends a signal through vagus nerve to the brainstem. Brainstem sends a signal through a hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve pushes the tongue in front. It also signals to come through the glossopharyngeal nerve. Glossopharyngeal nerve supplies two muscles in the soft palate. It's called palatoglossus and palatopharyngeus muscle. When those two muscles are tightened up, your snoring goes away. Person who has a snoring, person who has a sleep apnea, person who has sleep your insomnia, 
at the root cause of cardiovascular disease. So you are giving everything, you are giving aspirin, you are giving statin, you are giving your beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, you are doing angioplasty, stand, bypass, you are doing a therapy, symptomatic therapy, band-aid therapy at the terminal point. The root cause is up here in the limbic system. Root cause is your insomnia, root cause your sleep apnea. So look, see how beautiful it is. You will be doing a Ujjayi Pranayam. During Ujjayi Pranayam, you get so relaxed that you will see, you know, when you do Ujjayi Pranayam, there is no accessory muscles of respiration. When you see doing a Ujjayi Pranayam, your face is all tied. That is not Ujjayi Pranayam. And nothing, no accessory muscle will move. They're totally relaxed. You get a, even abdominal muscles just relaxed. You get a Udyani band, abdominal lock. Then you do a Jalandhar band, chin lock. Jalandhar band stimulates your carotid sinuses, activates your parasympathetic tone. Then you do a left nostril breathing. Left nostril breathing is called your Chandra Vedi Pranayam. That is your parasympathetic breathing. Ida Nari. Right nostril breathing is a sympathetic. Sura Nari, Sura Vedi Pranayam. Yeah. So let's see how beautiful practice for, and this is the, the old one in the, in the chair. Again, do your hands with the Adhi Mudra. It's a very relaxation, put it there. See, you can always do with the Dhano Mudra, Gano Mudra, but the Adhi Mudra is a very relaxing Mudra. It relaxes your body and mind. See, you have a saliva, you have a saliva in your mouth. Very important marker, very important sign. So breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. activation of parasympathetic tone and this is what yoga therapy is this is what a physician can learn that you are picking up same tools I'm doing a ujjayi pranayam I'm doing a chin lock jalandhar bandha I'm a chandra vedi pranayama but I'm combining them all together to give a profound relaxation of the coronary arteries and the endothelial health this at this practice has a more effect than the nitric oxide itself. I mean, you cannot even compare this. What is this practices? The vagus nerve comes down and vagus nerve comes to your lung and it, it, and it gives, a, gives a nerve supply to the nerve. So if you do a breath holding an inhalation, it's called abhantarin kumbhak. Breath breathing in is called Puroka. Breath holding is called Rechoka. That is Kumbhak. And breathing out is called Rechok. Breath holding in inhalation called Abhantarin Kumbhak. Breath holding in exhalation called Bajja Kumbhak. Now, when I breathe out first, take a deep breath in and I hold my breath, my lungs starts to expand. But my lung cannot expand anymore because, see, air is not coming out. Lung is like a balloon is going to expand because I have a chest cavity. So a reflex comes in, which is a protection of our body and mind. It's called a herring brewer reflex. Herring brewer reflex then will ask the lung not to expand anymore. And herring brewer reflex activates your vagus nerve. So you will see what is this. You do a chin lock. You do a abhantarin kumbhak. So you do a jalandhar bandha with abhantarin kumbhak. 
and it is so relaxing, so profound for your action. It is called a murcha pranayam. Murcha means unconscious. So this total relaxation will last. So if you keep on doing it within a short time, you'll develop neuroplasticity. Let me show you how beautiful practice it is. Again, I'm relaxed with my Aji Mudra. I breathe out first. I take a deep breath in. And also remember the chin lock, you try to keep your neck straight. Slowly you drop your chin down and see if you can touch your chin to the chest. Jalandhar Bandha. Jalandhar Bandha, Udiyani Band and a Mula Band. When you do all the three bonds together, you get what is called a Mahaband. It's a wonderful practice. So here it is. You are breathing out first. Take a deep breath in. Hold your breath. Slowly drop your chin down, touch the chin to your chest and keep counting how long you can hold. Just can come simply one and two and a three. Wonderful physiological changes, massaging your carotid sinuses and activation of heading brewer reflex. Can't have any better practice. You know, we always do, and give me a protocol, give me a protocol for this cardiovascular disorder. Understand the basic physiology. When you understand the basic physiology, you are all advanced yoga practitioner. You can take the tools. I see there's a lot of questions probably. Akash will be all monitoring the questions. Let me finish with a, a beautiful practice. This one will blow up your mind, especially the physicians who are watching. I'm going to do a Kapalbhati Pranayama. When you do a Kapalbhati Pranayama, what is Kapalbhati Pranayama? You have your awareness in the belly button. There is a balloon here in the abdomen. Then you have a diaphragm here and a balloon in the chest. The moment you push your belly button to the back, it massages all the intra-abdominal organ. It massages the diaphragm, massages the lung, massages the heart, air comes up. Active exhalation without inhalation. You are not going to inhale. You inhale in between without knowing the day you were born, you took a deep breath in. Nobody taught you how to take a deep breath in. We learn how to breathe out. We do your Kapalbhati Pranayama. Kapalbhati Pranayama is called Agni Pradhan Pranayama. It ignites our Agni. When it ignites our Agni, it is called Tejas. Our Tejas increases. Tejas gives us a glow around our face. That's called a kapal bhati. Kapal is a forehead bhati. It's a tejas, activation of tejas. We do it all the mudras. Dhanu mudra, vayu mudra, shunna mudra, prithibi mudra, varun mudra, shakti mudra, apana mudra, apana vayu mudra. Apana vayu mudra is called a ridai mudra. Do the ridai mudra. Like see, when I'm doing my ridai mudra, and gently I do a kapal bhati pranayam, and I tell you what is going to happen. I do one per second. Vegas now. <coughs> After supplying cardiac plexuses, pulmonary plexuses, Vegas now is coming in front of the gastroesophageal junction. Where left Vegas nerves come in the front, 
right vagus nerve in the back, it becomes a anterior vagus nerve, posterior vagus nerve, gastroesophageal junction, and look at a Kapalbhati pranayam is stimulating that vagus nerve. It's massaging, it massaging my liver, massaging my stomach, massaging my gastroesophageal junction, massaging my anterior vagus nerve, massaging my posterior vagus nerve, massaging my spleen, massaging my colon, massaging my intestine. For men, it's massaging my prostate. For women, it's massaging your uterus. It's massaging your ovaries, tubes, massaging your diaphragm, massaging your lungs so the air comes out. So I'm doing it, I put my air in, air comes out. In between the lung, there is an organ called heart. And it's massaging the heart very gently. Guess what? Yoga says if you massage an organ, the organ gets better in function. So we as a surgeon, we as a physician see when the person has a cardiac arrest. We do a external CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. When you're doing a chest compression, what you're doing? You are literally massaging your heart. We're cardiothoracic surgeon, even you come to the emergency room, cardiac arrest, we open the left chest and take the heart in our hand to massage the heart. So guess what? This Kapalbhati Pranayama is massaging my heart internally. I call it internal CPR, internal cardiopulmonary resuscitation. There cannot be any better practice. Massage your heart, create a relaxation response. Very simply, Pashim Namaskar, Brahma Mudra, and Brahmri Pranayam together. Activation of all the branches of the vagus nerve. You are in a profound state of prevention. Remember one thing. Let me finish it. We are going to have enough time for question and answer. Let me tell you the last statement, Mike. My father has a diabetes. My father has a hypertension. My father has a coronary artery disease. Guess what? My genetics is doing it. Genetics has nothing to do with heart disease. Genetics has nothing to do with a cancer. Gene has to express. It's called genetic expression. Gene expresses to a phenomena called epigenetics. Yoga therapy controls the epigenetics. It is a primary prevention. My father has a coronary artery disease. My father has a hypertension. I continue the relaxation response to yoga therapy. I prevent the onset of the disease. Primary prevention. Secondary prevention. I had an acute coronary event. I had acute myocardial infarction. I had an angioplasty done. I have a coronary bypass done. I have aspirin, statin, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor. Now I continue the relaxation response and a parasympathetic activation to yoga therapy. I prevent the progression of the disease. I don't need any more further stent. I don't need a medication. I had open heart surgery 20 years back. For 15 years, I'm free of medication. I'm enjoying a good quality life. Primary prevention, secondary prevention, tertiary prevention, rehabilitation, cure, you name it. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. If you want to read all of them in my book, I don't know if I've seen, here is my book, this book, I have a DVD and a book. I wrote the book, it's called Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine. What you call a healthy convergence. This is to teach physicians and the healthcare worker. Right here, take a look at a picture in the front, a picture of Albert Einstein and Robin Ronald Tagore. I said when a scientist meets a philosopher, it's a 21st century medicine. Let me stop here. This is my DVD, but nobody has a DVD player anymore, but this is all in my YouTube. You can go to my YouTube. You'll see all my practices in for cardiovascular disorders. For me, 
Yoga is 99% practice, 1% theory. Don't read books, don't read anything. Don't read all the papers and journals. Keep on practicing, everything will come to you. Okay, Akash, it's all yours. You can read all the questions. We can go over a little time tonight. I don't have anything. If your audience has the time, I have time. Not a problem, Dr. Sarkar. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I really enjoyed it and I, I know we all did. So we now have a few questions from our viewers. And viewers, I would like to tell you all, if you all have any questions, please send them to us on the uh, number and email address that you see below. Um, you can see it below on the screen. Please send all of your questions to that number. Thank you. So Dr. Sarkar, we will now begin the question answer session. Um, our first question from our viewers is, I have undergone CABG one month ago. Can you please tell me what yoga I should do? Exactly the same thing as I, what, if you listen to my talk, you got the answer. Sit down in a chair, sit down in a chair, keep your spine straight. Remember the relaxation. And my skeleton, in my skeleton, if it is there, it's going to fall in the front. All the back muscles, they are contracting to keep me up straight. So you feel it here, it's like, a, it's like a, a two bricks. But here, I don't know if you can see. You know, you can do it in a chair. This is, this is called a kneeling chair. You get a kneeling chair. Sit down in a kneeling chair and your spine will always be straight. Sit down in front of a computer. Do like that, even in a chair. Keep your spine straight. Or even every time when you're eating a food, keep your, keep your spine straight. Keep your spine straight. When you're driving your car, keep your spine straight. So remember, it is not a yoga practice. It is your lifestyle. Yoga therapy is your lifestyle. Yoga therapy is your daily routine. Learn how to breathe out first. Learn how to take a slowly, take a deep breath in. Learn how to breathe out longer than breathing in. Exhalation is parasympathetic, inhaler sympathetic. There is no protocol driven, you know, by the time people say, oh, come to my class, I will give you, I don't know, X, Y, Z. You know what will happen? You have a desire. You said, I want to do this. My coronary artery disease will be gone. Coronary artery disease will come back to me. I tell you, Akash, and I have seen so many of my patients. I'm doing a beautiful Kapalbhati Pranayama. My steel, my blood pressure is going high up. My blood sugar is going high up. You are doing too fast, too rapidly. You are not listening to your body signal. Listen to your body signal. Slowly incorporate a relaxation response through your body and mind. Do a very simple, gentle pranayama. It's not you do Basrika Pranayama, Kapalbhati Pranayama, Nurul Vilam Pranayama, Brahmri Pranayama. You know, don't do that. Do it slowly and gradually. If you can do it to 30 seconds, it's fine. Listen to body signal. Annomaya kosha to pranomaya kosha. Do not do anything to have any your breathing difficulty. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, nice. we have, yes, we have another question, which is my father, my uncle, all of my cousins have some sort of heart problem. So what yoga, what yoga should I do to prevent that to happen to me? I am 47 years old. Beautiful. Just incorporate a relaxation response, parasympathetic activation in your life. Do a, a daily routine called Dinocharya. I just did a whole day class called a daily routine. What to do? Yoga tells us, wake up in the morning, sit down, call it Malasan, sit down squatting pose, drink a glass of water, call it Ushapan. You have a you have an elimination, proper elimination in the morning. You get a good health, strong digestion, easy elimination, good night's sleep. You look at a baby, healthy baby will eat, sleep and poop. So what practice you do is all depends upon you and which yoga teacher you go to and which yoga session you go to. But the concept here is you have a relaxation response, activation of parasympathetic tone, throughout the whole day, when you see a saliva, like in my mouth, this is a parotid gland, the whole gastrointestinal tract from the mouth to the anal canal is supplied by parasympathetic nerve. 
And when you have a situation like that, the coronary artery will be remain open. So think about it. When you have a sympathetic overtone, the artery constricts. When the artery constricts, very simple way, I'm not giving you all the, all the clean, clean medicine. The inside lumen is called a lining, it's called endothelium. Endothelium cracks. When endothelium cracks, it starts collecting, collecting your calcium, collecting your cholesterol. It starts depositing what is called your coronary artery plaque. But when you get a relaxation response, so the coronary arteries are relaxed, endothelium is healthy. Even if you have a plaque at that time, that is called a secondary prevention. You call it macrophages. Macrophages are going to come and eat up those and open up the coronary arteries. We have angiographically proven that artery opens up. So for your practice, if you can do it on yourself, think about all the relaxation of your whole body and mind, activation of parasympathetic tone. I can tell you, it's like a Western term, it's called a money back guarantee. You know, people say, well, the cause of coronary artery disease, we really don't know. It's a smoking, it's my genetics, it's my diet. You know, it's my lifestyle. What it is exactly is your activation of your limbic system. High sympathetic tone. You are in a sympathetic tone throughout the whole day. If your father had a hypertension, your father had a coronary artery disease, you are going to have it. You incorporate a parasympathetic tone, incorporate a relaxation response, nothing will happen. What are the practices you can do? Go ahead and talk to a yoga therapist. Go to a nice practitioner. We have all the people at AYM. We have a new university. You can go and talk to them. Have a daily practice. Yoga is not that I do two days a week, three days a week. You do daily. It's a daily practice. Thank you so much. That was wonderfully articulated. Okay. Um, next question we have is, I have hypertension and I'm on Betts blockers for last 10 years. Can I do Jalander Band? Again, all, everything you can do. We have no contraindication as long you listen to your body signal. What is the body signal? First, your pain. If you don't cross pain, if you're in the Jalandhar Bandha, and if you're going to get a pain, you are hurting yourself. Next is your breath. When your breath is totally effortless, say, so I will do a headstand, I'll do a shishashan. I'm talking, I'm singing, because I develop that very slowly and slowly. So if you want to practice Jalandhar Bandha, nothing wrong in Jalandhar Bandha. When you do a Jalandhar Bandha, do it very slowly, as if it is your normal breathing, it is your normal state. It could be even here initially, stay here. Slowly and slowly, your neuroplasticity will set in, it will come down a little bit more. Two weeks, three weeks, it will come down more. So uh, for me, I don't have any contraindication for any asanas, any pranayama, as long as you listen to your body signal and you progress very slowly and rapidly. And we call in yoga therapy, in stages, impossible become possible. We have so many people in my town, they're off medication, they're enjoying a good quality life, but then never did a protocol driven, they listen to a body signal, slowly progressed, and had a wonderful outcome. Please try doing it and listening to your body signal. One thing very important, please do not take a pain medication and do a yoga practice. Because if you take a pain medication, oh, I've been hurting, you know, I take two Advil and do it, you are going to lose. Pain means pay, pay attention. You have to listen to your body signal. Very, very important. Thank you so much. Okay. The next yeah. question we see on our screen here is Kapal Bhati. Uh, is it okay to be practiced by a patient who is known to have HTN? Known to have what? HTN. Hypertension. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. 
Again, you do it very slowly, effortlessly. When you do a Kapalbhati Pranayama, you are singing. You are talking. Okay? You are not doing, you know, I can do, let me show it to you. I can do a very absolutely rapid Bastrika Pranayama. Because I do it every day, 500 Bastrika Pranayama. I do a rapid Kapalbhati Pranayama. But you see, just to give you one example. I can go continue for minutes and minutes and minutes. I can do 500, but I'll be talking. I'm singing. I'm totally effortless. I can do Kapal Bhati Pranayam as fast as you want me to do. But I'll be still an effortless ease. Again, another thing you do, so we do all this thing. We're not talking. We all do this thing with the heart tracker. I've been doing all these things. I have an Apple Watch. I'm looking at my EKG, looking at my heart rate. I do it all the time. I'm a physician. I'm a vascular surgeon. I can see the effect of it in my body and mind. So use them and see what happens. Thank now, you. You know, you know that, you know, Apple says that Apple Watch will be the health tracker of the century. It will all record your, your health parameters now. Thank you. We will take one last question as we are now running out of time. So the question is, which breathing exercise should I do for shortness of breath? Okay. When you get a shortness of the breath, always remember one thing, that it's called the Poncho Kosha model. What is Poncho Kosha model? You now we have a lot of students here, they will understand. We have an Andamaya Kosha, the physical body. And if the physical body has an imbalance, then you get a Pranamaya Kosha. It causes an imbalance in your breath. If you have any problem with your pranamaya kosha, because they imbalance your monomaya kosha. Monomaya kosha is your mind. If you've got any imbalance in monomaya kosha, it'll be viganomaya kosha. Call it intellect. Then you'll have intellect with your anandamaya kosha is wisdom. So what happens, people have a shortness of breath. People who have asthma, people have a congestive heart failure. When they cannot breathe, what happens, they get very anxious. They get very restless. And it gets pre-programmed in their mind. When they get anxious and restless, they lose all their intellect. The Viganamaya Kosha get imbalanced and they lose everything in their mind. So people who have a shortness of breath, people who have a asthma, I always tell them that don't try any pranayama, don't try any breathing technique. First learn how to quiet down your mind. Mind is a content of your five senses. Learn how to do relaxation of the skeletal muscles. Learn how to relax your muscles of the respiration first. There's a very nice, you can do a, call a shoulder relaxation. Just put your, you know, very nice way to do a shoulder relaxation. You do relax you first, quiet down your mind. Then the simplest way of shortness of breath is your lung is a balloon and is holding all the breath. Learn how to breathe out first. Breathing out longer than breathing in. Do not get into a pranayama practice. Don't say, you know, the alternate nostril on a little bit of pranayama will help me. Bastrika pranayama will help me. Quiet down your mind first. Relaxation of your muscles of respiration. You'll have a wonderful permanent therapy. Remember one thing. The whole concept of integrating yoga with the Western medicine. Western medicine is reductionist. Western medicine putting a band-aid on your symptoms. And yoga therapy is a holistic. Yoga therapy is hitting the root cause. You have a shortness of breath, you try to fix it with the pranayama, you will never get any results. But you know the root cause now is in your mind. If you quiet down your mind, you'll have a wonderful result. Keep Thank you. Find the practices. Thank you. Wonderful. You know, I, I enjoyed all these questions. I enjoyed like if you have more questions, send me email. I'll be glad to answer for them.
Yes, yes. We are encouraging all of our viewers to send an email. We will be able to answer all of the questions, um, you know, through email and through other different uh, ways. So I got to say, wow, what an informative session we had today. We all learned so much about yoga and pranayam and how it can help uh, people with cardiovascular diseases. And not just that, but much more than that also. I also loved, Dr. Sarkar, how you gave us so much scientific knowledge about the physiology related to our respiration. You talked about cortisol levels, nitric oxide levels, and even the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Thank you so much for giving us such a great experience of yoga and pranayam both today. I would also like to thank our tech team, Anjali Ji, without whom this webinar would have not been possible. Our next event is a workshop on yoga therapy, which is starting in the next five to 10 minutes. Our viewers, please visit our website on aaymonline.org for more details. Now, for those who are unaware, this is the last week that we are having the International Yoga Conference. Please visit our website for the details about the last few webinars we will be having and the closing ceremony, which will be live streamed on Facebook. However, although this is the last week of the International Yoga Conference, please stay tuned for many, many more great events hosted by the American Academy of Yoga and Meditation, because we will still be having great speakers who will give us wonderful knowledge and many informative sessions. Once again, I thank you all for coming today to this webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to all of our viewers all around the world. See you all very soon. Namaste.